Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This is going to be my unboxing and quick look, quick impressions on GPD's latest handheld, the GPD Win 3. Now this is GPD's first time releasing a product with two different SKUs. It remains to be seen if this is going to be a thing that happens often. Uh, largely I've said that this particular product is a trial balloon because of the new design that they've gone with this. We'll touch base on that in a little bit. Before I go to the unboxing, there are some things that I want to talk about as an introduction to this unboxing and quick look. So, if people recall back on my earlier videos uh, in the beginning of 2020, or if they've just been following along on my Discord, Intel's Tiger Lake was what I believe to be the first chipset that would cross a performance thres threshold that people would start to take notice. Unfortunately, mainstream kind of anticipates that you know especially with pcs that pc is mostly notorious for being where performance is for gaming so when you have a handheld where you're really lowering resolution and taking a hit on frame rate um people start to question it and then when they take a look at the price they just take a look at the switch the switch has optimized games for it but it also has nvidia's gpu in there which is honestly a very good gpu so when you kind of combine all these different factors into it it mainstream just never really looked at it the right way because again the problem is there are two different versions here there is the tiger lake intel 1135 g7 and the 1165 g7 the main difference between those two is that the new willow cove cpus are actually really good the 1165 g7 only has a small frequency bump on the cpu part of it but on the gpu of the 1165 g7 it has 20 percent more, more execution units so 20 percent more gpu they're both at the same frequency 1.3 gigahertz so now when you hear that stuff you're saying well why wouldn't i just get the bigger one the problem with all of these devices and the thing that we always fight and struggle with is that we are trying to fight against batteries batteries are the weakest link for all handheld devices they are the things that really set the bar on where they need to be so it remains to be seen yet, and I hope to discover that as we take a look at this video. If we run TDP at certain at specific TDPs, will the 1165 G7 beat the 1155 G7 if they're both going at 15 watts? I hesitate to believe that's the case, but we shall see if it is the case. Now, can GPD's heatsink support up to 28 watts? GPD says it can. We'll be doing a test there as well, as well as taking a look at the thermals. Um, we're going to take a look at the weight. I have a GPD Win 1 running off over here. I have a benchmark running for a while just because this was notorious for uh, what was lovingly called a lava stone. It would just get hot in your hands. Um, and, you know, GPD slowly improved, uh, largely improved over there, especially over the GPD Win 1. So I hope to be able to take a picture to compare it to the GPD Win 1 and run a GPD Win 3 for a while and show you some thermal scans of what that looks like. I bought a FLIR thermal camera, so we'll be able to actually have some real results there. I'm really excited to be able to show that. So um, that kind of touches base on the beginning of this. This is what I consider to basically be GPD's first real entry into the mainstream mindset because we are, we are going to start hitting performance thresholds that people are going to start to take notice. Things are only getting better, especially if we take a look at AMD's Rembrandt that should be about in 2022, uh, be available for GBD type of devices in 2023. Um, that is using Zen 3 and RDNA 2, and that will be able to achieve enough performance at a low enough wattage that it matters for us. Obviously, the thing that we always care about is the battery. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start unboxing these units. Now, if anyone has been following along, um, you will have noticed that that the 1135 G7, 1165 G7, there were two models. The silver version was the 1135 G7, and then the 1165 G7, the all-black model, was supposed to be the special edition for Indiegogo. That has changed. Now the all-black model is now the standard edition, and the silver model is the limited limited edition. So if you like how the silver model looks in this video, the only time you'll be able to get it is on Indiegogo. Now, that could change because things have already changed, but a lot of people have already spoken up and said that they only like the black version, which is right here. This is the first time I'm holding this right now. Every impression that you see here is my first time using the device. So I haven't used it all day. I had a ridiculously busy day at work today. 
I haven't had a chance to use it at all. It is rather late by me, but I'm hoping to get that done all, all this video all done now. Plan on just like going through it. Here's a manual, which maybe you want. It's pretty much understood, and I'll be kind of going over all of the ports and everything that's in this manual with you. So uh, we'll get a kind of a rundown as it goes along. Here are the rather snug charger and cable. Now it should be noted that the charger that came with my GPD Win Max wound up changing for what was ultimately getting delivered to everybody. So this might change yet again. This is uh, a bit bigger than the GPD Win Max charger. So here's the GPD Win Max charger and here's the Win 3 charger. It looks like this one that they had planned for the Win Max, which is honestly super nice. I really love this one. Unfortunately, no one got it. Uh, I would say that since this one is bigger, let's take a look at these, the power on this. Uh, fast charging. We have 20 volt, 3.25 amp. Same, same. Yeah, so I would anticipate just because of how large this is that chances are that you will get something that is just like this because this guy is really compact. This is just a super, super nice charger. Um, this isn't bad. I mean, obviously this, there is a small size difference, not like gigantic, but I would anticipate that you should still get this particular unit instead of, uh, the nice charger that I wound up getting for the max. And then there is a USB-C cable, a white USB-C cable on the bottom, which, um, I guess maybe I'll show, I don't really think it's super necessary. But to get that full unboxing experience. Ready. Looks like a three foot cable is included. And it's like a, a rubber band. That's interesting. Okay. So that is the power adapter and the cable. We'll go ahead and put that back. I just snugly put that back in there. Alrighty. I'm going to unbox the silver version as well and kind of have them side by side for a moment. Alrighty. Um, <laughs> which one do I open? You know, I'll do the all black one first. All right. <laughs> GPD, I mean, it really is. It just is. It's really nice. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at the GPD Win 3 proper before we start powering this up. Here we can see the analog stick as well as this really interesting patterning that they put on the analog stick. It still feels a little bit slippery. The grip isn't very grippy, but it's very much more grippier than the Win Max. Uh, the other thing to note here is that the analog stick seems to not be completely finished. There is a traditionally these things are supposed to have a bigger skirt so that the innards of the analog stick workings, uh, as well as like to protect dust and stuff. Uh, this skirt part should be a bit bigger. I will talk to GPD about that. I would wager that this still needs to be updated. Uh, if anyone watched any of GPD's videos, they were playing with 3D printed sticks. So perhaps these are still getting made. If that's the case, I would really prefer if these were like an the Xbox 360 analog sticks where they were, you know, concave. So this is the new Xbox Series X. You can see that like when you move it around that the skirt doesn't show anything on the inside as well as you can see the you know the texturing around the rim as well as how it is concave. It just gives a nice place for your thumb to sit and actually holds on to the thumb better. That's one thing that I mean if GPD still has to make the analog sticks I would hope that they make them concave as well as producing a bigger skirt for this. Um, I don't know how, you know, I'm sure they're fine in use, but I still would prefer this to be a little bit different. The D-pad is obviously just excellent. This is a Vita style D-pad. If you have a Sony PS Vita near you, if you pick it up and just use it, it is, you, you'll just close your eyes and think and use your PS Vita D-pad and you'll be here. It is extremely similar and it's excellent. Uh, along the side, you can see we have the micro SD card slot here. Here is the traditional GPD switch. 
So we have the gamepad mode as well as mouse mode. You would flip it over into mouse mode and that would translate all your analog stick into scroll bar for the mouse wheel or the mouse wheel itself. You could left click and right click. So you can do everything that on the available game controls to translate over to mouse. And then you can just switch this back over and then it's like actually connecting an Xbox 360 controller to your Windows PC, but it's all housed internally. On the right side, we can see that there is a fingerprint sensor right here, as well as the Xbox Xbox button. So if we take a look at the Xbox controller, I can go ahead and lean over. That's this button right here. That is what often gets called the watermelon button. So if you ever are on the disc Discord and see watermelon, that is this is the watermelon key. Um, and then you have the face buttons. Uh, along the top, we do have the biggest new addition to the GPD Win 3 and GPD's first analog triggers. So L2 and R2 are full analog. So for racing games, if you wanted to, you know, finesse the throttle, you can. You just gently press it down and you'll gently rev up. And then you have, you know, your bumpers or L1, R1, whatever you want to call them. Along the top, we have USB-A, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, uh, volume button, volume rocker, and power. We have our rather large exhaust along the top, as well as our inlet on the right side, the right side as you hold it. And I do have a thermal camera, so we'll be able to take a greater look at this. Here are macro buttons. These are back buttons that currently do not work, but GPD is going to create firmware that these will work, much like how uh, the GPD Win Max, you could update the firmware on the controller. Same difference here. These will be working, and then you can program these to be whatever button you want, which is pretty cool. So if there's some type of macro key that you wanted, you could make it right there. It's pretty nice. Uh, let's see what's on this side. We've already looked at that side. On this side is blank. The back is that. And on the bottom, we have our Thunderbolt 4 port. This you can connect to an eGPU solution. So if you wanted to dock it at your house and then use the Willow Cove CPUs, which are extremely good, and then a discrete GPU to power games on a, on a monitor, you do have that ability. And then you basically have a full gaming solution with this little guy and a full uh, eGPU enclosure. Here we have downward firing sp stereo speakers, which, um, you know, they are downward firing. Obviously, it would be preferred if they were pointing face forward. So that's what the black model looks like. I'll put that on the side and we'll go ahead and just take a look at the silver model real quick, just so you can get a look at it. I don't know which one is which in terms of if the silver model is the 1135 G7. You know, looking at the silver one, it is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, this will be the special edition model. So this will be the limited version. Um, it's in the back. So it's got like a dark gray. It's an interesting, it doesn't look bad. I mean, I still prefer, I, I do still prefer the black one, but if you really wanted to have that special look, the silver, silver one is there. This is, this is how you're going to let everyone know that you mean business. And then on the back, we have that dark gray. Is that the same as well? Yeah, they're the same. So it's just the front styling that's different. I like it. It really, it looks cool. I, I, you know, I know some people in pictures, it doesn't really look in pictures. It looks worse than it is in reality. I actually do like it. All right. So now the moment of truth, right? We've been waiting for this for a while. I've been waiting for this for a while. Here's the part that I was waiting for. We're going to engage the slide up keyboard. I'm going to do it two fingers first. Okay, just a little bit of force. Okay. That was a nice click uh, by going down. That's nice. It kind of slotted in real nice. Now, can I do this with one finger? What if I just do it on one side? No. What about this side? No. In the center? Yeah. So you can do it one finger in the center, but you really can't be doing it just like one finger up, like the sidekick, the danger sidekick, where you can just like flip it with one finger real quick, which is super satisfying. Here is the all touch keyboard. Huh. It is as flat as it comes. You have zero tactility here. 
Now, my hopes were very low for this. They remain low <laughs> right now. <laughs> I will do a keyboard test in this video and see how well I can type. But, oh. I don't know. This, I mean, it feels fake. It feels like, you know how you, you know how there's like fake props at a store that you could pick up to kind of just hold and play with? That's what it feels like. It feels artificial. That is interesting. So I have to try that out. Can I just, all right, let's, let's see if this works. I'm going to power this on. I'm going to power this on and I'm going to hold down the Dell key. So FN Dell, and I'm going to see if I can get into the BIOS. Okay. So let's go ahead and power this on. Okay. It's on FN Dell. Let's see if I jump into the BIOS. No, I don't. So I don't think that this actually works. How am I going to get into the BIOS? All right, let me jump ahead and see if I can't get in there. Yes. Follow the instructions to teach your PC to read your fingerprints. Alrighty, so here I am entering my thumbprint. Now, because of the 720p display, this particular area it isn't is getting cut off on the bottom. There's nothing I can do to kind of like scroll up. It just is what it is. So I'll just keep on entering my thumb until it gets it. Now, just in case, go ahead and set up a pin. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you, and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. You know, I kind of don't mind using it like this with the keyboard up. Let's go ahead and close it, though, just so that you have the very traditional. Now, let's go ahead and just do a very quick comparison here of size while that does what it does. So this is a switch. So there is the switch versus the Win 3. And if we kind of put it inside it, I do not have a switch light, but basically it is the same dimensions as a Nintendo switch light. And this kind of makes it very clear how small this particular device is. So really good. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and get the weight. Okay, it's at the ounces. We're going to go ahead and change it to grams. Okay, go ahead and put this on the scale. It is 552 grams. If we take a look at the Win 2, that is 482 grams, so about 70 grams heavier. What about the silver one? The silver one make any difference? 558 grams. Let's do the full switch. Full switch is 416 grams. If we take a look at the Win Max, the big boy, that's 825 grams. So still, it's in between. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than a, a Win 2, but still not insane. Alrighty, here is the display. And it is a nice looking display. Where we have 3D Mark 11 installed, that's nice of them. An app was default was reset. And get started. Alrighty, so the back casing is now off. And on the back you can see the two buttons. They are still clickable. And then they have this ribbon cable that connects over here with this um, pogo pins, the pogo pin connector. Go ahead and put that on the side. There's only like seven screws on the back. Pretty simple to take off. And then here is the business end of the Win 3. There's some type of marking here. I don't know what that is. This is like 27 or what? Some type of number. Uh, we do have the Intel AX200 wireless chipset. This is a fantastic chipset. Uh, I've had zero problems with this particular chipset. Wi-Fi speeds are fantastic. Connecting Bluetooth devices is super simple. Been very, very happy and pleased with that. 
Here we can take a look at the battery. This is a chonker. Look at that chonker. Hey, look at that guy. How many cells do we have? We have three cells. So it's 11 point, 11 point seven volt, right? Do we see it here? Where do we see it? Uh, wait, is this four cell? One, two, does it go deeper? It's a 13.2 volt, which is a lot of voltage. We can see it's a 44 watt hour battery. It's got a good amount of voltage on it. Oh, right there, nominal voltage, 11.55. Okay. Oh, the charge voltage is 13.2. There it is, 11. It's a three cell battery. Three, S1, uh, three series, one parallel, 11.55 11 volt, 44 watt hour. So it's a 44 watt hour battery. Earlier on when I was talking to you about this being our major component that will dictate basically what we can do with these devices because this is what is going to determine how long you can play for. And as it stands, two hours is really the absolute minimum that I find acceptable. It's why I've put my GPD Win Max at 18.25 watt, um, 18 watt basically, because when you talk, we're not just talking about the wattage of the chip itself. There's also the power of the rest of the components. So like the NVMe, the 16 gigs of RAM, the LCD, the Wi-Fi, the speakers, the display, like all of that costs power as well. So when you factor in all that, that will start eating away. And if, if you don't think four watts, five watts matters, it's huge. Especially if we take a look, think about this as a 15 watt TDP chip and it goes up to 22 watts in total, all of a sudden, this 44 watt hour battery is going to mean we have two hours of battery life. Now, that's at 15 watt. If we go down, we're going to gain, if we go down to 10 watt, 17 watt, you almost get three hours. So when you're talking about a difference of, you know, an hour for a five watt decrease, that matters a lot. Now, obviously, when you go down in wattage, the total system power should change accordingly, depending on what you're going to do. Some lightweight games should be less demanding. Emulators are always going to be taxing and they're always going to be pushing uh, total system power a little bit higher. Uh, but again, that's something that we're going to be touching base on and reviewing and taking a look at everything. This is what the inside looks at looks like. And then right over here, you can see the pogo pins for the back buttons. So these are little spring buttons. You can push down. That's pretty cool. Now, what is this? This says Win3 pogo pin. Here's the rumble motor, but what are these four points? Is that are those USB points? Can you just are these like internal USB that you can just? Because a lot of people have been asking for this, so if you can solder onto that, it might be possible that we could add gyro to the Win Three. Is there anything on the other side? Let me get confirmation to see if these are this is internal USB. It says J3 right there. That would be really cool if this was internal USB solder points. Because this is something that the community has been asking for, and I also reached out to GPD and said, say, hey, can we get internal USB points? This might be it. Alrighty, before I box this back up, this does indeed look like these are USB mounting points. So if I had to guess, and just looking up, the number one is plus five volt, Two is data negative, three is data positive, four is ground. Uh, I'm trying to get clarification on what the schematics are and how that actually maps out, um, but potentially that is the case, but I did get confirmation this is logical USB right there. So if you wanted to add gyro to the Win3, it looks like that's going to be possible, or, you know, anything really. Super cool. And there's a good cavity over here to kind of put whatever you want. All right. So this will be the technical specifications segment of the unboxing video. Here we're going to be taking a look at the controller specifically, and we can kind of tell that the dead zone is mostly fixed here. So if we get really close, if we take a look at that, that figure, you can see right there that it gets activated right away with just a minimal push. In addition, you can see that there is a slight tendency for cardinal snapping, but it will allow that to disengage rather quickly. You can see that there's a little bit of cardinal snapping, but just a little bit of a nudge in a direction will 
on hook it from that cardinal snapping. When I say cardinal snapping, I mean the cardinal directions, northwest, southeast. So uh, you can see that there's a tendency that when you want to go straight up or straight down, it's going to make a beeline in, an, in either direction. But you saw when I just did left, it kind of pivoted up a little bit. But the good news is that it looks like the dead zone is largely fixed as well. So that's pretty good. We'll see how this feels when we actually start playing it. The actual placement of the buttons as they are right now in this particular configuration is pretty comfortable. It's not that bad um, using the the D-pad and stuff. We get into a kind of a claw like position, which is a little bit unfortunate, um, but not terrible. I'll see how this is. We're just playing D-pad intensive games. I hope to actually get a, a look at Celeste in this video as well as some other types of game tests uh going further along let's go ahead and oh wait we have to test all the buttons so we if we press the analog sticks they work you can see them highlighting on the screen the d-pad is working select and start also you can see that it's impossible to press the center of the d-pad nothing highlights that's easy oh, it's, it's, it's beautiful this is such a fantastic d-pad buttons are working and then, of course, the analog triggers themselves. Now, I really still have to test along with other gamepad testing software, if only because um, the dead zone might report differently. But in here, it's testing perfectly. I just like how this showed the analog triggers so that you can see them working perfectly. So go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and start talking about... Uh, I'll let me just go ahead and bring this up. It's already open, so there's no... No, it isn't. I'm going to go ahead and do that and take this and say no to that and we'll go to sensors here so this is hardware info and this is what i run to feed info to Revo tuner which is how you see the on-screen display uh so very quickly this is a 5.5 inch 720p display it's gbd says it's gorilla glass 5 and you can see it is a slide up keyboard we can actually if you take a close look here you can actually see some maybe when the backlight turns off is it off let me see yeah, now, it, now it's on. So you see there is a backlight to the keyboard. It does look uniform and really nice. Uh, it is possible to actually see fingerprints smeared across this because it is kind of a glossy finish. Hopefully I was hoping to get a better shot of that. Let's see if you can see it here. Let me see if I can catch it. All right, now that we're out of the gamepad testing part of this segment, let's go ahead and start talking about the specifications in general. This is a 5.5 inch screen. It is 720p. GBD says this is Gorilla Glass 5. I really have no real way to test that other than taking their word for it. If we can take a look here, you can see that this particular black model that I have, this one is the 1165 G7 version, the silver version here being the 1135 G7. And again, I'll be doing further tests between the two to kind of really dial down uh, all the different performance metrics. I might have a separate video of that going into a bit of a deeper dive separately, and we'll slightly touch base on it here because this is already going to be a pretty long video so again we have 16 gigs of lpddr4x the frequency of the ram runs at 4266 megahertz that will down clock itself based on d demand uh and we'll you can see that i could actually put that up on the display so you can see on games that don't require as much usually like indie games pixel based games that will actually benefit us in not having a high system power uh, so we, we will be able to demonstrate that and see and, and validate that that's the case. It does have a Bywin M2-2280 NVMe stick on here. We're going to test that. Actually, let's go ahead and test that right now. So here we can see the Bywin SSD. And I'm going to turn off all of these because they're just going to throttle my, my SSD. And I only care about throughput of the stick itself to get as a general metric. And we're going almost, we'll say 1.7 gigabytes a second. Uh, for read and write, which is fine. It's it's good. Now, the thing to note here is that this is PCIe 4, so you could put in an NVMe 4 stick. It is four, 4 lanes, so there is 8 gigabytes of throughput available. So if you got a stick that could be P NVMe 4, it would indeed support it. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at my um, micro SD card that I have right here. We'll just do, again, do a straight test now i don't have a very fast card so this is supposed to be a2 support 
Alrighty, so my particular micro SD card, the read speeds were 93 megabytes a second, which is topping out on that micro SD card. I really didn't expect it to go that high. Writes at 50 megabytes a second, which is about right for the card that I have on here. It's a pretty old micro SD card. It is 256 gigabytes, but it it's not A2 compliant. It's not A1 compliant. It's like a U3 card. Uh, having said that, older micro SD slots typically topped out at 80 megabytes a second, and we're obviously clearing that. So being higher than that is a... a a huge win for us knows that we can it does have a2 support and will be up to that tier so it's good that we got that measured now let's go ahead and go ahead now it is the ax200 on here so if i do speed test which i didn't spell right at all let's go ahead and use bings now it is worth noting that uh my outbound internet connection is 75 megabits that Verizon Fios says. However, it will f burst up to 125 megabits. At that point, I will fully saturate my speeds. Uh, and we can clearly see that I am maxing out my particular Wi-Fi on this. The Intel AX200 wireless chipset really is fantastic, even for, connect for connecting Bluetooth devices. It's sensational. I can't say enough good stuff about it. Definitely great. So that's good to have a good test on. Now the charging, the adapter is a 65 watt power adapter. We looked at that earlier when we did the unboxing. Again, it is a Thunderbolt 4 port on the bottom here. There is a single active fan. At the moment with how little is happening on the device right now, it is extremely quiet. It is switch quiet like. I do have a sound meter. It is an analog sound meter. I will try to bring that out, especially when we start doing the benchmarks and try to see if I can get some type of range. The best thing that I can do for you is compare to other GPD devices. The switch makes no sound at all. So comparing to the switch is, is it's practically inaudible. So you're not going to hear it at all. I will get actual analog sound meter results for you. And then we have the capacitive backlit touch keyboard. The backlit part of the keyboard is actually uniformly lit. It is very nice to look at here. They did a good job. Now, when you press down on this, I don't know if you can hear it. Let me see if I can try to get you to hear it. There is a little vibration that happens, much akin uh, to like pressing on a cell phone when you have a little vibration feedback. It's rather similar to that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we went through all of the particular specs. The only thing that I didn't touch base on was that every GPD Win 3 comes with one terabyte. Now, I'm glad that they did this. Uh, typically, it's always just not, it's always one contiguous block. This is how you're going to get it. So you're going to have two different partitions. This is how GPD writes to the disk. What you're going to do here, uh, I'm going to kind of segue out of this. This really shouldn't be a part of, we're going to go, so let me go. You're going to go on this PC right there and you're going to right click on it or hold press with the, on the touch and not, we're going to go to this PC. And then you're going to go to manage. This takes a little bit sometimes. So if you go to disk management, this takes a little bit. What you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to go on the D drive. You're going to want to delete that volume. Once that's deleted and offline, you're going to click uh, hold or right click, hold press or right click on the C drive. And then you're going to want to extend the volume. And then you'll be able to, it will automatically maximize to the thing. You're just going to click yes, next, next, next. And then that C drive will expand to that complete part. and for the final part of the technical specifications we're actually going to jump into the bios and because i couldn't get to it by holding down dell another way you can do it is by just going and saying to reset this pc so if you go to reset this pc you're going to say advanced startup let it go through its paces and then we're going to do the troubleshooting steps and then from there you can just do uefi so if we do troubleshoot and then we did advanced options then ufi firmware settings and then go ahead and click restart this will jump start us right into the bios when it restarts so we'll be able to see what's going on in this bios now the one thing worth pointing out that is this is a 720p display it is portrait and we're going to verify that in a second i'm going to try to play an old game on this okay the d-pad does work even in the bios that's cool all right so tdp is set to nominal nominal right here is 20 watt PL1, which is basically what it's going to be at forever. 25 watt PL2 is something that's only going to be in a window for about 20 ish seconds. It's not super valuable. TDP down is 15 watt and TDP up is 25 watt. So that's a sensational amount of power and something that you should really just be reserving for something when you're connected to a wire or docked. 
um, it will chew through power and the battery rather rapidly. Once we figure out total system power, if it was 25 watt, let's just say it's 8 watt on top, that's 33 watts, you're looking at about 90 minutes of battery life when you do 25 watt on this device. That is not very great. It is a tremendous draw. It is a tremendous power draw, and it's a hard task, and it's just batteries that let us down. Uh, this is the end of the BIOS. We don't want to do that. But it's nice that the onboard keyboard does work on the BIOS itself. So that's pretty cool. Glad to see that. That is going to be the completion of the technical specs. I'm also going to just quickly show that the thumbprint ring, uh, fingerprint reader just works like that. So that rounds up the technical specs kind of overview as we look at it and testing what we get out of this particular device, what you're going to have with this particular device. Uh, let's go into benchmarking. Now here in the benchmark, we're going to get a score and I will give you an idea of what that means translated to other devices. The important takeaway here is that we're going to get an idea of how loud the fan gets on the back, as well as the radiation, the heat radiation and how that affects the entire case. I do have a camera that will be able to record that and you'll be able to see that in this video. All right. So you can see that the package power right here, this is running at 20 watt, but if we look at charge rate, um, that is what I'm pulling from the battery. You can see that we're at 28 watt. We're almost at 30 watt right now. So we are having a nine watt surplus for total system power. If I lower the brightness on the display all the way, we can might be able to see what that drops down, that drops us down to. Looks like we saved around a watt by doing that. So this in particular, I don't know if the backlight on this, when this turns off, if that's going to matter much for us. Total system power readings are way off. I'm gonna, I, it was available to me in hardware info, but that is completely not accurate. The charge rate at 30 watt is what I would consider to be accurate for 20 watt. So we're almost using almost 10 watts at medium brightness right now. The thing that is ridiculous right now is the temperature. The temp is 54 degrees Celsius. 55. Does this stand? It does. All right, that says 19 minutes, but that was running. Actually, this was running a few minutes more. Uh, so I finished the benchmark for Heaven, and we can clearly see that. All right, so the score is 3164. <clears throat> for comparison, the GPD Win Max, which is Ice Lake, pretty much at 18.25 watt, 20 watt. It's pretty much the same. At 20 watt, I'm going to be getting around 2100. Um, you can get a slightly higher score on the win max but it's really going to be topping out right there for this to be at 20 watt and to hit 3164 i mean we're approach you know we're over 40 percent better score 40 percent better performance within the same tdp uh that's extremely impressive like really really impressive so uh, i'm looking forward to be able to test more stuff but the thing that we should definitely be looking at here now this has been running for 20 some on minutes at 20 watt tdp look at the temperature You can barely hear the fan look like listen, listen to it. It's noted like you can hear the fan. I can hear the fan where I am. I'm about two feet away from it. It's about two feet away from my face at the moment. Uh, it's audible, but it isn't outland like it's not outlandishly loud. I am surprised at how well this heatsink is. I'm a little bit upset. With the total system power, you can see that the charge rate right there, we're hitting 30 watts. This means that at 20 watt TDP, you could roughly anticipate getting around 90 minutes of battery life. That's worst case scenario at 20 watt TDP. If we lower that wattage to 15 watt, we're going to see where that is. We have to see where the thresholds are and see if we can undervolt this machine. 
Um, but this is just an early look at that. What I'm going to do right now, this has been running for 20 minutes, 20-ish, a little bit 20 plus minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a thermal image of this, and we're going to cut to that right now. All right, I am now recording with a thermal camera. This is the back of a GPD Win 1 right here. You can see that this is why we called it the Lava Stone. The, you can see the battery igniting right <laughs> through it. That's exactly where the battery is. So that's right where you'd be holding the hand. And then right here is where the, the fan is doing nothing. Um, and then you can see just all around is really hot. That's the GPD Win 1. And then we can compare it to the GPD Win 3 that has been running for the same amount of time. Well, that's not true. The Win 1 has been running on the side for about... 40 minutes but still this is <laughs> crazy and this is the gpd win 3. you can see that it's this is the hottest spot where you're not really going to be touching this is where the exhaust is let's see if we got it even hotter over here no so the hottest point is right about 36 degrees celsius Oh, it recalibrated and it jumped up. Let's see over here. So we go back over here. This is 53 degrees Celsius. And then on the right hand side, it's super cool. And then if we look over here, the hottest point is 38 degrees Celsius. Let's see if we can find a spot that's 38 degrees Celsius on the win one it's right there but pretty much this entire battery just ruins the experience anyway it's very cool it seems like right where you can see the heat source right here this is where the the cpu is and the heatsink but all the external components are heating up over here so there seems to be still a section where it's getting hotter this was one thing that I forgot to record. Uh, so this are these are the sleep states that are supported on the Win 3. So we do support S1, S2, S3, and that's it. S3 is basically going to be your best bet. That's going to suspend everything else except RAM. Like everything, RAM, everything will stay in RAM, but everything else will shut down and it'll extend the battery life a lot. It's also uh, the sleep state that will work with a, a, f a fair amount of games. Some games won't be able to successfully recover from that sleep mode, but there are a good amount that will. There's a, a list that we have that's the GPD Win 2 list that is probably the best bet to get an idea of what will survive sleep states in games. All right, so here we are doing a 15 watt test between the 1165G7 version and the 1135G7 version of the Win 3. Now this is PL1 and PL2 hard locked at 15 watt. You can see right here that PL1 rating is at 15 watt. Uh, there is no deviation. I could list PL2 here. It is 15 watt. You can see that our CPU package power is locked at 15 watt right there. Now. This is a 15 watt test. You can see our score is uh, almost 3000, 2095. Min FPS is 30, max FPS is 231. We see our FPS rating on average is 118.5. If we take a look at the 1135G7, the one with 20% less GPUs, we can see that our score is a little bit better. We have a slightly higher average FPS. Really, this is kind of negligible. Don't read too much into it that the 1135G7 in this particular test at 15 watt is getting a slightly higher score than the 1165 g7 version this is kind of just negligible like negligible test i would have to run this test multiple times and then average all those tests out to get an act more accurate result uh but you can see right here pl package uh is pl1 power limit is 15 watt you can see our cpu package power is hard locked at 15 watt now the curious thing here and i just want to make sure that i'm actually in the same type of brightness because that's the only thing that would really change things. I'm going to put brightness at a medium setting right there. I'm going to put brightness at a medium setting here. I just want to make sure, yeah, let's get it right in the middle. So charge rate right now we can see is 21 watts, 21.2, 21 watts. And our charge rate here is 21 watts. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, both of these are running the same uh, PL rating, so they're both running 15 watt PL1, PL2, hard locked at 15 watt. 
medium brightness, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth on, everything else is functioning the absolute same, and they are running pretty much identical. Uh, so right now at this early stage, there will be more tests by me outside of this. Stay tuned for that because that'll be more present in the full review. And I'll have a full suite of tests at different TDPs, but this is just kind of just a, a sneak peek because this is just a quick impressions video of benchmarks and what you should anticipate with TDP. But this is falling in line with what I would have expected. Um, I mean, we do have a different EU count, so there should have been some precedent for those EUs running at a lower frequency, thus achieving better performance at a slightly slightly by slightly requiring less power however that is not the case in this particular test there does need to be more tests happening um so don't read too much into this just yet but at the moment this is a good idea of more to convey like the standard thing is like just because you have a better chip doesn't mean that you're going to get better performance if the power isn't available to drive that chip. If you have a big engine, but you're not giving it enough gas, it's not going to go as fast as it can. Now, that is just something that I really try to convey all the time, because a lot of times people kind of miss that point, and they just want the best thing available. That's okay. And if you want to basically plug in and max out wattage and don't care about anything, you're going to get better performance on this. There is no doubt about that. But since we're running on batteries, we really want to concentrate on the amount of energy that we're using. Um, so from my particular standpoint, these are pretty much the same, even though we have a better chip, uh, chip in here. The benefits are really going to come when you dock this machine or you plug it in and play while tethered to uh, mains electrical. That's it for a quick look at 15 watt TDP test. Again, we're going to take a deeper dive in the full review, as well as having little bite-sized videos as we get closer to the full review. Let's go ahead and look at a very quick glimpse and see if Linux is working without really any tweaking. I'm not going to take a deep dive in there. I'm just going to see if it works. And then we're going to head to the conclusion of this video. All right. So I don't want to take too long here. I just want to show that uh, Linux is running. We are having those issues again where trying to rotate the screen is a little bit of a problem. I am not taking a deep look into this just yet. I will take a deeper look into it later on. I just want to finish up this. I just want to show that this was indeed working. In fact... You can see this little USB-C connection that I have this little dongle connected. And the only reason that I have that there so that you can see this mouse moving and that's what that's connected to. The only other bit that was kind of worthwhile is that you can see the clearance that you get from connecting a USB dock here. And it does have enough clearance. So if you have a fat, chunky USB stick, that might get in the way. But as long as it's kind of straight and in line with the rest of the USB port, it should clear it no problem. But anyway, uh, Linux is running, but we do have display rotation issues, at least initially. I'll take a deeper look into it later. Just wanted to kind of point that out. Okay, so this is going to be a very quick test to just show that it is indeed a portrait display. This fails to load. This is an old um, direct draw game. So this game fails to render because when it's pushing out, it's it's not compensating for the rotation of the screen. So we get that issue that it can't, it thinks that it can't resolve to this screen. Um, what we can do is we just download DG Voodoo 2. So we're going to put these wrappers into the folder go to go to home. so we're going to put these wrappers right in the executable directory of abe's odyssey and once that's done we're going to go ahead and run that again and you can see that it just runs look at that 2800 FPS. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you can run older games, no problem. You can see that there's a little DG Voodoo 2 uh, watermark over there, which would be nice to just get, get, get away. Go ahead and click Escape. Yo! Look at that CPU, CPU package power. Total charge weight 
<laughs> total charge rate, six watts. That is unreal. Oh my goodness. And this D-pad and these face buttons. Oh my goodness. 3.5 watts. What? Four watts? Get out of town. Total charge rate. We're at 6.5 watts. Let's just say it's 7 watts, right? Uh, that's 6 hours of battery life. Six hours of battery life. Whoa. Yes, this is what I like to see. All right, we're going to go on to some heavier hitting games, the ones that will extract a little bit of a heavier price on power. Very quickly, you can see that I'm running Vulcan. We'll go up a little bit closer in here just so you can see what's going on. Uh, overall, image quality is set to ultra. Resolution scale is at 100%, so we are doing 720p full native with ultra settings and Vulcan backend. So that's those settings. We're going to go ahead and continue my game here. So on the right-hand side, you're going to have all of the metrics that are provided by Doom, and then over here we have the metrics that I put up on the screen, so you can see that it is running the Vulcan backend. Now, in these types of situations where we're, you know, it's running at 37 FPS, it would be advisable to um, frame cap at 30, but uh, now that we're actually in the game and it's, it's running uh, above 60, at this Sorry, I'm like trying to play the game while uh, not looking through my viewfinder. So I do apologize if uh, this goes off screen a little bit. So now that's one thing that I didn't really touch base on, and honestly, I, I had forgotten about it. Um, I brought it up when we took a look at the innards. We did see that there were rumble motors. Uh, and obviously, rumble is in the game. The one thing is, is that it actually feels better when the rumble is not super um, aggressive, when it's just rather um what's the word that i want to use here they are decidedly cell phone style rumble motors so when they are intense it tends to feel not super awesome it feels almost um like not a great way to add rumble to something uh, uh, with games like celeste where the the rumble can be very very what the hell just happened to me did i just die out of all that all that battle and i fall into <laughs> um uh, yeah i'll load from checkpoint um what i want to say here is that the rumble that is on here it works when it's intense it doesn't feel very good uh all right so that's pretty much it i do want to apologize here one of the things here is that the audio mix in is going to be a little bit noisier here only because I can't use my other mic that isolates all the sound because you won't hear any of the audio coming from the device itself. But we've been really able to have a really good frame rate, which you should have been able to see up here. Um, even when there was intense action, moving around was really good. Now, I am playing on ultra settings at 720p native. If you just tone down the settings just a little bit, this looks and plays fantastic. Uh, really, really impressive. So this one we can see right up here. The only way that I can get 
let me move forward a little bit. So you can see that our frame rate is um, 60, but we're not kind of steady 60. Also, I'm doing low settings uh, at 720p. This is any, there's no dynamic resolution or anything going on. This is just static settings. Uh, and we're kind of fluctuating around 53 to 60 FPS. Now, the more important thing here to show off is uh, the trigger. So we'll stand the GPD Win 3 vertically here and we'll slowly throttle the. First, let me break, break. Okay, now we're going to slowly throttle. Okay, let me get a little bit closer so you can see that. So you can get the tachometer and this. Just so you can see that the analog trigger does work. See if we can get a better angle of it right here. Yeah, that's a good angle. So yeah, that's just a shot of the analog triggers at work. They do work as advertised. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at just some very easy emulation uh, and then Celeste. Okay, this is the latest development build of Dolphin. I am all using every speed hack that I can check in the little graphics menu. This is one times native. Uh, I'm not doing anything crazy here. This is Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. This game is a little bit heavy to run. Uh, we are running at a 15 watt TDP here. Total charge rate is 21. You can see right there, 21. Let's call it 22. This is effectively two hours of game time to be running this particular game in this emulator. Um, but it runs reasonably well, so a brief hiccup right there as we load it into it. I'm just going to A through everything here. I got a rusty key. I'm going to go rust up some rats. Hey guys. So this is going to be pretty much, we're, we're getting very close to the end of this um, particular video. It's already gone far longer than it should. I'm actually recording, how do I attack? I've actually spent more time editing and getting things ready than actually playing on the Win3 itself. Um, I still have a fair amount of actual testing to do because there, there's, an, there's enough that I need to do here that I have to... Uh, you saw a frame dip right there. There's enough that I have to do that... Uh, you know, having both both units, the 1135 and the 1165, this being the 1165, you can see this, the black model is holding the silver model before. I've been kind of switching between them. Um, there, I really need to be able to give everyone a clear understanding of what both models actually do and where where it matters for them and try to cater to their own subjective view on how they would prefer to use... Oh, I'm getting all bitten up! I don't know if you, you might be able to hear. Oh, well, my heart is thumping. That's the little rumble motor on here. You should be able to hear that. Um, it feels like a cell phone rumble motor. It's not super fantastic. It's uh, it's better than nothing. I'll, I'd take that over no rumble. I, I certainly would. Much like I'd take this keyboard, keyboard over no keyboard. Um... There is, uh, I forgot, after this row of games that we have to, to show off, I do have to do the a quick keyboard test. Um, I have already recorded the keyboard test. I'm just thinking in my head what I have to do for editing. Apologies for rambling here. This is uh, already getting way too long in the video. I'm going to end this particular part right now. We're going to jump over to Celeste, and that'll be it. Then the keyboard, then the conclusion. That's it. I pretty much covered everything I possibly could within the time frame here. It's taken a lot longer than I would have wanted it to. The... Uh, the resultant video is also a little bit longer than I would wa would have wanted it to, um, but thank you guys for sticking it out. Alrighty, here we are playing Celeste on the GPD Win 3. This is going to be the last game demo test. This is a game that I like to show off for the D-pad. This is a pretty intense platformer, and it requires precision. So having a good D-pad with face buttons as well is also is pretty critical. No, that's one thing here. Just look, listen to this. Again, it's kind of... You get an idea of the type of rumble that, that's there. Much like uh, Chernobyl. 
Not great, not terrible. Take a look at my hands. Boop. Take a look at how my hands are in the placement of them. You are rather forced to have this very claw-like position when using the D-pad and the face buttons. And my fingers have to extend to reach the analog sticks, uh, the triggers, apologies. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to speak and do things at the same time. <laughs> How do I move this junk? Oh, no! Christmas! I want to give this device enough time, so I'm going to install Hades as well and just try to play it and give a better idea, a better opinion on what I, how I feel about using the Win 3. supposed to do something here. I've never played Celeste, so please forgive me. Oh, okay, there's a, a Strangberry there. Let's take a look at package power. So you can see that our package power right now is 3.2 watt. Charge rate is, uh, we'll just say it's 6 watt. This fluctuates, obviously. But right now, 6 watts is amazing. That's, you know, less than a light bulb, an LED light bulb. Um, we will be able to, at 6 watt, that's 7 hours of gameplay. No! Just fell on a bed of spikes. Um, I have seen Celeste go up higher, especially in the prologue section. That was 100% higher. But we are um, hitting a consistent 60 FPS. I see it hit into like 59 every now and again, but honestly, that's not a big deal. Whoa! All right, this is actually a good... Um... All right, so I have to... I got gotcha. you. I'm pressing the back buttons, and you can hear the... It was like, um... Okay. How am I going to do this? I have to go over? I'm... Oh, I have to hit that. Okay. I'm pressing the back button, and it's like, um... There is something... Okay. Yeah, okay. That, uh, cramped the hell out of my hands to do that. I have a biscuit. My hand is also hitting this back button on accident all the time. So, uh, I almost would want to disengage that back button. Uh, okay. Oh! <laughs> Okay, that's enough of this. Let's go into the keyboard test, and then we'll finish it up with the conclusion of this, uh, well, I mean, said review, this quick look. All right, the next, the next test that we are going to do is the keyboard test. All righty, moment of truth. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Hypochondriacs. Hypo. Chondriacs. Oh no. Comma. But when they actually have. Oh no. And, oh. Cancer, comma, no, it gets discovered, I'm fat fingering all over the place, treated, right, no, 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 oh, come on, G-H-T. Which 
leads, nope, fat fingered, to a better, no, 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 period, okay. My accuracy was 84.36%. My word per minute is 19. Um, yeah, so let's back this up some. So here is a bit of an issue. When I'm typing, basically I'm, I'm resting the Win3 at this particular side of my hand. Same over here, just so that I could reach over so that I can hit the middle of the screen. This device really can't be any wider because I'm already kind of stretching just to reach the middle. I can hit it, but I am extending. The only problem is that when I need to capitalize anything, I use the left shift key, which I do all the time. But look at this reach that I have to do to like if I was to do a shift Q, look how far I am. Um, the problem is like when we take a look, I was at my word per minute score on the win two. like you look at this, I still was, I mean, I guess I was still reaching over here. It just doesn't feel as uncomfortable, but also having the tactility of pressing, like the problem is, is that when my finger is getting close to an area, but if I just graze R when I'm going over to T, that's going to enter in an R. So you have this, it's not, it's a, it's a weird fat finger. It's, you're just kind of like dragging along. The only saving grace is that as you're going along, there is a rumble. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me see if we can get that. There is, there is feedback when you press it. It's just that it's not super helpful. Um, the other problem is that this row of keys up here, when you're, when, you know, when I'm trying to thumb it, my thumb is too fat. <laughs> my thumb's way too fat. Like, so like, you're going to like, I mean, you can, but you're going to have to peck at it. You're this entire top row is like for pecking. It's good with the index finger. No problem with index finger, but with my thumb, like, like, look, look where my thumb is basically in between the five and the Y right here. I can't go up any further because the bottom of this screen is hitting my thumb. Let's see if I can get, get it right there. It's, it's, it's making it, but it's also crowding on the Y. Whereas this, I mean, I'm just going to fat thumb it a lot. Um, I am going to go... I'm going to use this keyboard significantly more. Um, my expectations for this keyboard were that it would be for when you need it, emergencies. I'm glad that it's there. I'm glad that it works when it's in the BIOS. That's awesome. That's super helpful. Um, it's been helpful when I had an Alt F4 out of uh, Abe's Odyssey when the touchscreen wouldn't like do anything. I had to Alt F4. Um, having a keyboard is necessary, and it is a great way as an ejector seat you have your you have your levers you can alt f4 you can control escape you can press the windows key there's lots that you can do here to advance or quit or cancel out if you have no means to eject out of whatever program is full screened or exclusive mode um there is a ton of value in having this keyboard if it, if the option was no keyboard versus a keyboard Yes, I, I would very much prefer this keyboard. Also, this backlight is really nice. Um, it's uniform in darkness. It's going to be perfect. Even in light, you can clearly see it. This is acceptable. Um, but in terms of a typing experience, I will continue using it. I'm going to hold my reservations, even though my expectations were low and in using it, um, they're still low. <laughs> like it's, it's not good. Um, it's it's not great for productivity. It's not great for typing. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything good to say about this keyboard. I had low expectations going in, and uh, it it I it, they it, they didn't exceed those low expectations. So that's my look at the keyboard, and that'll be the end of this unboxing and quick quick impressions.
So we'll get to that part now. All right, so this is going to be the conclusion of my unboxing and quick impressions on the GPD Win 3. We took a quick look at some gameplay. We took a look at some benchmarks, some performance metrics on each individual part of the components on this. There are still going to be some more extensive testing going forward. Again, this is just my quick look and introduction to the GPD Win 3. Obviously, we're going to be taking a deeper look at the other version of the GPD Win 3 as well. This is the 1135G7 version. This particular version that I have in my hand right now is the 1165G7 version. We still need to do a full comprehensive test on all the different TDPs and how each SOC responds within those TDPs. It remains to be seen how well the 1165G7 version works as opposed to the 1135G7 version at lower TDPs. Obviously, at higher TDPs, the 1165G7 is going to win out completely. Um, for the most part, this new sliding mechanism, I really... It is, it is nice. It's, it's rigid. It is, there's some people saying if it's a janky, it's not janky. It's just rigid. Uh, it does require at least two fingers to push up. It does have a nice satisfying ka-chunk when you open it all the way and close it. I can listen right now. And again. So there is a very solid, satisfying conclusion to opening and closing. And so far there hasn't been any issue. I have been kind of playing both up and down. I don't know which way I prefer just yet. I keep on using two fingers to lift it because if you just try to do it with one, again, it's not really going to open unless you use go from the center. Um, so I don't know, it's just a little bit easier just to use two fingers where my hand placement is. It does still remain to be seen how well this controls. Like right now to use the D-pad and the face buttons, it is a rather, or you can like scooch it up a bit to play so that it's a little bit more comfortable. I am going to actively play a game. I think I might actually just try to install Hades and uh, actually play the game because I've yet to play Hades. And uh, I'll play on this device and see how well it works. Um, that's going to be it for right now. I tried including as much information as I possibly could in an introductory video. Please stay tuned. There is going to be a tremendous amount more coverage still happening, as well as for the final review that I have to get done uh, relatively soon. It's going to be, you know, a lot of work and a lot of um, tests that we need to accomplish just so that I can give you guys a clear idea of, you know, what is the actual difference between these two models. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.